Hi boys and girls, this video comprises the lecture for section 9-6, the ratio and root test, starting on page 639. These are the final two tests that we're going to learn for convergence and divergence, and it will sort of complete the body of knowledge that we've been acquiring since we started chapter 9. So let's see what the ratio test is. It says we do have um, a series with non-zero terms. Turns out that it converges absolutely if you take a limit as n approaches infinity of the a sub n plus 1 term over the a sub n term and find that that limit is less than 1. So um, you find on subpoint 2 that it diverges if that same limit is greater than 1 or infinity and it turns out that the ratio test is inconclusive if this limit equals 1. So the idea will be we will identify the a sub n term we will identify the a sub n plus 1 term We'll make a ratio, a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. We will take the limit as n approaches infinity. And again, this is sort of the absolute value part of it as well. We'll see what this limit is. And based on what it is, we'll be able to determine if it converges absolutely, diverges, or if the test is inconclusive. Let's try this in the first example. Notice that I have a little note up there which says that although the ratio test is not a cure for all ills related to tests for convergence, it is particularly useful for series that converge rapidly. Series involving factorials or exponentials are frequently of this type. So that's exactly what we have here. Let's see how this is helpful. Over here, I'm going to identify the a sub n term, which is 2 to the n over n factorial. I'm also going to identify the a sub n plus 1 term, which is 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now remember, we're going to make a ratio with this term over this one and take the limit. So let's set that up. We're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of the following ratio. It's going to be 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial over 2 to the n over n factorial. Well, this is a complex fraction, so I'm going to do a little simplifying over here, just some side work to make this easier for myself. 2 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial divided by this is the same as times its reciprocal, n factorial over 2 to the n power. Now, remember that n plus 1 factorial can be rewritten as um, n plus 1 times n factorial, and 2 to the n plus 1 can be rewritten as 2 to the n times 2 to the 1. With those modifications, you can see that 2 to the n's cancel, n factorials cancel, and I end up with this simplified expression 2 over n plus 1. So back to my limit. I'm really looking for the limit as n approaches infinity of 2 over n plus 1. Now you can see as I plug in infinity that this is going to become 0. And the ratio test says that if my limit is less than 1, which this certainly is, then the series converges. And that's how you use the ratio test. Let's look at another example. In this example, I'm going to go ahead and identify the a sub n term as n squared, 2 to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n, and then of course the a sub n plus 1 term, pardon me one second, okay back now, as n plus 1 quantity squared, and then 2 to the n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2, over 3 to the n plus 1. All right, let's set up our limit. We're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity, and I'm going to simplify this a little bit. Um, we're going to have n plus 1 quantity squared, and then 2 to the n plus 2 over 3 to the n plus 1 times the reciprocal of our original um, nth term, which is 3 to the n, over n squared 2 to the n plus 1. Now remember that a few things can be rewritten. We can rewrite this as 3 to the n times 3 to the 1. We can also rewrite this term as 2 to the n plus 1 times 2 to the 1. With those modifications, you can see that the 3 to the n's cancel, the 2 to the n plus 1's cancel. This leaves us with um, a simplified version of the limit. Limit as n approaches infinity 
of, we're going to have the 2 and the 3. I'll just kind of write that as a coefficient. Um, and then we're going to have n plus 1 quantity squared over n squared. And we're going to take that limit. Now, we would have to do a little bit of work here to actually analytically work this out all the way. But I just want to remind you that if I write this as 2 thirds and then times again n squared, if I FOIL this out, plus 1 over n squared, we're going to end up with a leading coefficient here of 1, since the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator. And um, that's going to be 2 thirds times 1. I'm sorry, that's not right. That's going to be 2 thirds times 1. Actually, I was right. I had to go check really quickly. So this turns out to be 2 thirds, which is less than 1. And by the ratio test when it's less than 1, the series converges. Now I skipped a lot of things that I often show you when I'm doing this. We could rewrite this as 1 plus, divide this into each of the terms, 2 over n plus 1 over n squared. When you plug infinity in here and here, you get the 1 times the 2 thirds, etc. I didn't want to go too fast, but um, this whole thing is just going to become a 1, and we would know that since the degree of the numerator and denominator are the same, and we can take the ratio of the leading coefficients. So um, skip that analysis, but that's what you would do. So now let's see a, a, um, an example where the ratio test fails. You can see we have an alternating series here, so we could use the um, alternating series test, but instead Let's just try the ratio test. We're going to let that be our a sub n term. So a sub n is going to be, I'll just write this as n to the 1 half over n plus 1, which means a sub n plus 1 will be um, n plus 1 to the 1 half over n plus 1 plus 1, which is n plus 2. Now let's set up our limit. <clears throat> the limit as n approaches infinity of um, n plus 1 to the 1 half power over n plus 2 and then times the reciprocal of the original term n plus 1 over n to the 1 half power. Now let's rewrite this a little bit so we can see what we have. Notice that you have n plus 1 to the 1 half and n to the 1 half. Let's combine those and put them into one term. So now we're looking at the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 over n to the 1 half power, since they're both to the 1 half power, times this um, term, which is n plus 1 over n plus 2. Now, what's happening under here, as you can see, if you divide n um, into both of those terms, you end up with, I guess I'll just continue this down here, you're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity now of, this will be 1 plus 1 over n to the 1 half power. I just divided n into n and n into 1, which gave me this, and then times this term n plus 1 over n plus 2. Now notice, um, I could go through and divide everything in this term by n and analytically show that when we're plugging infinity in, we're going to get this result. But once again, degree of the numerator and denominator are the same. Take the ratio of the leading coefficients. This guy is going to become 1. Furthermore, when you plug infinity in for this n, you, um, you're going to have 1 plus 0. And the square root of 1, of course, is also 1. And this turns out to be 1, a problem for the ratio test, because that's where the result is inconclusive if the limit turns out to be 1. However, all is not lost, it just means you can't use the ratio test. We could go back and use the um, alternating series test, which might be the obvious choice since it is an alternating series, and when you do that, you find that it converges by the alternating series test. But you just needed to see what happens when you get a limit of 1 um, with the ratio test and the fact that the results are inconclusive. Our second test is called the root test. This is the last test for convergence and divergence, and it works especially well for series involving nth powers. Nth powers because we're going to take an nth root. So notice that it says your series will converge absolutely if the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term is less than 1.
It diverges if the limit is and approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the nth term is greater than 1 or infinity. And similar to the ratio test, the result is inconclusive if the limit is 1. So let's see how this works. Now notice the reason why they said it's particularly suited to um, terms that have nth powers, and lo and behold, that's what we have here things with nth powers. In fact, let me rewrite this a sub n term as e squared to the n over n to the n. Now let's apply the root test. It says the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root, ooh, that scared me, my husband came in the door. Hold on one second, boys and girls. Sorry, I'm back. It startled me a little bit, and I like to pretend like I'm recording these videos in some sort of, um, you know, place where there's no distractions or interruptions, or I don't have to cough, or I don't make mistakes, but that's not really true. So we just forge ahead with, you know, the system that we have in place. Anyway, back to the root test. It says if you take the limit as n approaches infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of this term, which is... Um, e squared to the n over n to the n, um, that result will tell us if it's convergent or divergent. Now notice, of course, that as we, we need this to be absolute value because we need it to be positive because what if that nth root is an even number? What if that index is even? Of course, we're, we're not looking for imaginary solutions here or results here, so the absolute value keeps everything nice and positive for us under the radical. And yet, when we simplify this, this becomes what we need to look at. The limit as n approaches infinity of e squared over n, because taking the nth root, divide n into the exponent n, and that just pops out, which is really nice. You could rewrite it this way. Maybe this would be um, easier to see, right? This is e squared over n to the nth power. Is that an n right there? And then, of course, the index and the exponent cancel, and out emerges e squared over n. Now, look what happens when we plug in infinity. Of course, we get e squared over infinity, which is 0. And once again, since that is less than 1, the root tells, test tells us that this series converges, and that's how this test works. Now, Notice we're at a little summary place. We have now studied 10 tests for determining the convergence or divergence of an infinite series. Skill in choosing and applying the various tests will come only with practice. Below is a set of guidelines for choosing an appropriate test. So, first start with, does the nth term approach zero? If not, the series diverges. Since so many of the tests require that we take a look at the nth term, that's what we should check first. If, it, if it's not zero, then we're done. We use the nth test term for divergence, and it diverges, and that's it. The second thing we should check here is, is the series one of the special types, geometric, p-series, telescoping, or alternating? If we can identify it as a special type of series, we have the rules that we need to test for convergence or divergence. If that doesn't work, can the integral test, root test, or ratio test be applied? If so, that's what we would do. Um, probably for the integral test, you would want it to be easily, it would, you would want the nth term to be easily integrated. Remember, there's all those conditions as well. For the root test, we learned that that works well when you have nth powers. The ratio test works well with factorials and exponentials. And then finally, if none of that works, we would use one of our comparison tests, the direct comparison or the limit comparison test. So now in this last slide, or second to last slide or third to last slide, depending on how you look at it, last example, let's look at all of these series and see if we can sort of talk through, I'm not going to work all of these out, but talk through what you would look like as you were determining convergence or divergence of each series. Um, notice this nth term right away. Oh, I didn't mean to be writing there. Notice right away, let's use this color because it makes me um, feel perky. Uh, right away, see that? We can see that, that the limit of that term is not going to be zero. It's going to be one-third. So since it's, that term is not converging to zero, then we stop because by the nth term test for divergence, this little fellow diverges. And gosh, you know what, boys and girls, I can only hope 
that on the AP exam, you get a lot of those, and you're like, bam, I'm done. This one, not so bad, though, because we can identify this as a geometric series, right, where the ratio is pi over 6. Now, remember, if the ratio is less than 1, it converges. Greater than 1, it diverges. Um, and in this case, I think greater than or equal to 1, it diverges. And this one does have an absolute value associated with it. But regardless, this is less than 1. So this series converges by the geometric series test. Over here, this is um, the nth term of this. You might think, oh, that looks like it's going to diverge. Let's try it. But not really, boys and girls, because notice this is really n over e to the n squared. Because this is infinity over infinity, you would have to log a tau, and you'd end up with 1 over um, 2n e to the n squared. And then plugging in infinity here would make this go to 0. So we're not going to be able to use the nth test term for nth term test for divergence here. So then we go to see if it's geometric or p or alternating or telescoping, not. So then we would think about root, ratio, and integral. Now this looks like a great setup for integral, doesn't it? Because um, you have basically, just with the negative 2 there, you would have the du for e to the negative um, n squared, where u is negative n squared. So that's the test you would use here, and you would discover it converges by the integral test. I need to make sure because I'm not working all of these out. Then over here, um, this guy is not any one of our four series. Uh, it's not going to diverge because of the NTTFD test. And so um, ratio and root test maybe, but it does seem like a really nice setup for a um, comparison, perhaps a limit comparison test. And you would find that letter D is going to diverge by using the limit comparison test. Now here we have an alternating series, and so this seems like an obvious setup for alternating series test. Remember there are two conditions. One, you, of course you have to have the nth term, the limit needs to be zero, which as you can see it is. You need to have subsequent terms be smaller than previous terms, and that is going to happen here, and it turns out by the AST that this converges. That's what you would use there. This guy, with his little factorial and exponential, looks like a perfect setup for using the ratio test. And using the ratio test here, you would discover that this diverges. And then this fellow, with his nth exponent, nth power, seems like a perfect setup for taking um, a square root with an nth index, doesn't it? So we would use the root test here. And in doing so, we would find that this converges by the root test. So. All of that information kind of condensed into this is the type of reasoning that you would use, not only in um, determining convergence or divergence, but in how to choose a test to use. And so, of course, on your homework, I'm just going to correct this typo right now because it's driving me crazy. Um, so on your homework, you are going to apply that kind of reasoning as well in determining convergence or divergence. This slide is just saying, hey, we have reached the pinnacle, and here is a summary of all of the tests for infinite series. They're just all here for you. And finally, I have a little algebraic message for you here. I hope you can read it. And um, of course, it, it, um, all the result, the conclusion is from my heart to yours, boys and girls. Here's your homework assignment, and of course, this is due on Monday, April 23rd, along with the other two assignments from sections 9.4 and 9.5. And that concludes this lecture. 18 minutes and 54 seconds.